Good morning. Thank you for joining us for the Daily Hope. My name is Jim Doyle. I'm a pastor over small groups in the Connections Ministries. So great to be with you here this morning. Uh, today's reading is 2 Chronicles chapter 2. And I've been really obsessed with watching the Olympics, mainly because I've been so impressed at how well these athletes perform under such tremendous pressure. They face seemingly overwhelmingly competitions. And But I really kind of want to bring it back down to us weekend warriors for a moment. <laughs> um, have you ever been handed a daunting task and wondering how you're going to step in and accomplish that task? Maybe it's for the, being a first-time parent or caring for elderly parents. Maybe it's work-related. Maybe it's ministry-related. Then you stop and, and pray for strength, endurance, wisdom, even giftedness in handling the task. And I don't know about you, but I'm always blown away by how God provides a way through those experiences. And I often look back in amazement and gratefulness and say, oh man, thank you, Jesus. Well, we find in 2 Samuel chapter 7, and then in 2 Chronicles chapter 2, which is our reading for today, first, that first David, followed by his son Solomon, faced pretty big tasks. But in 2 Samuel, we see God providing David the funds to obtain the land and the building materials, and then the ability to devise the plans for the Israel's temple to worship their God. That's huge. Then here in 2 Chronicles chapter 2, God shows up again to grant Solomon the means to trade Israel's surplus of food for the king of Tyre's lumber designers and construction workers to get the green light to actually build the temple of worship and a palace of, as well. So a few things come to mind here in 2 Chronicles chapter 2. First of all, we should be praying for opportunities to pass on the legacies in our lives of pursuing the Lord to those coming after us no matter what our age is which may mean that others will finish the task that we've begun. Look at, listen to verse 7, or verse 1, says, The time had come for Solomon to build a temple for the Lord, which I said his father David already had the plans. David left a legacy for his son. Number two, it's not wrong to pursue excellence, we should, in all that we do, as long as we stay and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Listen to verses 5 and 6. This will be a magnificent temple because our God is an awesome God, greater than any other. But who can really build him a worthy home? Not even the highest heavens can obtain him. So I am. So who am I to consider building a temple for him except as a place to worship him? It brings Colossians 3, 23 to 25 to mind here. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Jesus Christ that you are serving. Amen to that. Again, Solomon had this amazing temple built, not only for his own glory or recognition, but to honor God the best way that he humanly knew how. And, and so let me ask you, in what ways can you pursue excellence in your life with the temple of your own body, mind, and spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord actually resides? Think about that uh, for a moment. And then I'll move to point number three. If you are willing and open to God's gifting and leading, he will use you for his purposes to build his kingdom. Because the Israelites were largely farmers and fishermen and not builders. We see in verse 7 that God moved Solomon to ask outside help of Israel for, for which God gifted foreign craftsmen to come in and build the temple. God can use you in your family, your workplace, in your community, at church to exercise your gifts, talent, and skills to bless others. And in this case, God gave Israel the opportunity to share with these pagan people of Tyre about the one true God. And those people, the craftsmen, the builders of Tyre, got to build an amazing temple for the God they hopefully came to know for themselves. Is that awesome or what? How are you building into the lives in your circles of influence? 
What legacies are you leaving in your course of actions? How has God gifted you to serve him best or even in moments of need? You know, I have this assessment called MAPS. It's acrostic. They, that you might be interested into, in discovering how your motivations, your abilities, your personality, and your giftedness, your spiritual gift or gifts, can be used to bless others and build up the body of Christ. Simply email me at jim at northcoastcalvary.org for more information, and we'll talk about that. God bless you, and have a great day.